Hello everybody, meet Jim. He was my first base and I get asked a lot what the best starter base is. Now, it's a really difficult one to answer because obviously instruments are a really personal thing and it all comes down to personal preference and what feels great for you. But I figured the best way to answer this is from personal experience. So, this is an Ibanez SR700, it's a sound gear model. Um, it was the best introduction to bass I could have possibly wished for. I mean, these things are incredibly comfortable to play, uh, they sound great, they don't sound cheap, and they can do pretty much every style I can think of. Um, there's no limits with these things really, considering they're not the most expensive basses on the market. They're, they're not mega cheap, but they're about £250, so they're a worthy investment considering you kind of don't want to pay, I don't know, 150 to 100 quid for a bass that kind of sounds okay and feels okay to play but isn't great and then a few months or a year down the line have to replace it because in the long run it's going to cost you a hell of a lot more money so it's worth investing in one like this where you know that it's going to be a lifelong friend because these things are great even now like I still love this bass and I've been playing 10 years now I think and I still think it sounds great, there's still nothing that I've tried to do on this bass that it couldn't do, and I think that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, they're incredibly well made as well, which is always good to know, because a lot of cheaper basses can be kind of dodgy. I mean, I've seen some where I've, people have come for less and they've been like, oh yeah, here's my bass, I'm like, that's gonna fall apart pretty quickly. but. Um, Another thing to keep in mind, obviously, if you do try one of these bases, or any base in the shop, is they're not always going to be set up particularly great, if at all. So keep in mind that the action might be really high, so the strings might be really far off the fretboard, and it might feel a little bit uncomfortable to play, but if you can kind of get a feel for how it feels overall in general, and if it feels like it'll fit you with a lower action and a bit of TLC, a bit of love and setup, then uh, yeah, I just can't recommend these things enough. Um, they are active bases, so you're gonna need to change the batteries. <laughs> Personally, I found even on other models, I've tried several models of the sound gear, and they've all had a really long battery life, so I tend to change them about every six months just to be safe, but if you leave these things plugged in, if you leave an active base plugged in, even if it's not plugged into an amp or anything, it's still going to run the battery down. So always check the battery anyway. Um, and I'll change them more often if I feel like it's been plugged in a lot. So always keep that in mind and don't get caught out. Always keep a spare battery with you, especially if you're gigging. Um, so with that aside, I mean, they sound great. A lot of people say uh, active instruments sound synthetic. Honestly, I disagree. I, there's nothing synthetic sounding about this. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, but it's always worth keeping in mind. It's personal preference, really. Um, with the dials, obviously we've got volume, uh, pickup selector, then treble, bass, and this is a slap and finger. EQ, which is pretty interesting. I've never seen another one on a bass, but <laughs> I quite like that. It sounds great. So I'm going to talk you through some of the sounds now and show you what it can do because it's incredibly versatile. I uh, hope you enjoy.